everybody. Welcome to another Make It Monday. My name is Alejandra. I am a member of the STEAM team here at the Chicago Public Library. So thank you for coming back to another video or welcome to your first library video. Uh, today we are going to make French toast and we are going to talk about the science of French toast and why it just works the way it does for this simple dish, but absolutely delicious. So before we get started, um, I'm going to talk about the ingredients uh, that you will need, and then we'll get more into the science of each ingredient. So first, you're going to need some bread. Again, the uh, French toast is really catered to what you like. So any kind of bread will do, fresh, stale, broche, Texas, regular, just kind of thin sliced bread. You're also going to need some milk. And again, catered to you. So if you have uh, dairy milk, if not, you can use almond milk, you can use uh, oat milk, coconut milk, just as long as you do not use skim milk, because skim milk is really just water and it's not going to do what you need it to do, because milk still has a step in French toast. And then you're going to need some eggs. Uh, I'm just going to use one because I'm just making two slices of French toast, but you need your eggs or an egg substitute, or you can even use cornstarch. The only thing with cornstarch is be very light on the cornstarch if you're gonna use it. So I would recommend maybe start with like half a tablespoon and incorporate it with whatever liquid you're using to really kind of see if it gets that consistency because the egg acts as a binder, which we'll talk about a little bit more. And I'm making basic French toast, so you will also need some cinnamon some vanilla extract, some sugar, a little bit of salt, butter uh, for your stove. So you're going to also need to use the stove. You're going to need uh, a plate and probably a spatula is easiest. You can use a fork, but the spatula is really just easier to use. And then to mix everything together, you're going to need a fork. You can use a whisk, but forks are more readily available. And a shallow dish. It's definitely easier to use a shallow dish than it is to use a bowl because you have to dunk that bread in. And if it's just kind of in the sides for the bowl, it's just all not evenly distributed and it just becomes a mess. Okay, so we are gonna talk about the science first before we get started. So really the best thing about this, um, this experiment, well, it's not really an experiment, but about this activity that we're going to do, which you can turn into an experiment later, but is that we're going to use the kitchen and the kitchen is your home laboratory. So here is where you can experiment, where you can really mix and match, figure out what you want, because uh, cooking and baking is really like high tier science. Um, chemistry specifically for baking and for anything is the foundation of kind of cooking. So when you're cooking, you're usually mixing different ingredients together to then heat up and create something new. So that's a chemical reaction, is minimum two things, mixing together um, and then heat it up. So the reaction is caused by some type of heat and then you get something new. Plus, French toast is just absolutely delicious and anything you make in the kitchen can be delicious. So of course, you know, take precautions. We are using the stove today. So caregivers, um, if you can be around or if you completely trust the child to use the stove, great. It, the stove will not be needed to be on any kind of high, high temperature. So it should be relatively safe, but just take a precaution. Um, so the other things that we are gonna talk about with French toast is we are gonna talk about the Maillard reaction. So the Maillard reaction is something that you don't often hear unless you're around like a chef or um, or you're looking more into, into the sciences. So the Maillard reaction is one of two non-enzymatic reactions that happen. It's like they're like non-enzymatic browning. So when your food browns, it's usually not because it's burning. Like, of course, that that is the process that happens towards the end. But when your food is browning, like if you make toast, yes, it's heated up, but that 
that um, nice like dark brown color, that's because of this non-enzymatic browning that I'm gonna talk about. So let's see, what else happens? Uh, you, have, you have steak, you have coffee beans, you have caramel, there is um, pizza, the toast like we talked about, the French toast we're gonna make, even suntan lotion. All of those actually have something in common and that is the non-enzymatic browning that occurs to make it. So there are two different kinds. There's caramelization, which is when a sugar and a sugar react together, make this caramel, so that's caramelization. And then there's the Maillard reaction, which is sugar reacting with amino acids in whatever you're making to brown. So the best example for the Maillard reaction is usually steak. People often talk about, ooh, get that nice like brown, that nice crust on the steak. That's the Maillard reaction working. Or when you're um, making caramelized onions, which is kind of a trick because it's in the name is caramelizing onions, but really it's a sugar and an amino acid working together to make that browning. So it's really the Maillard reaction, but those are the two most common types. So that is what we're gonna talk about today, what we're gonna see happen, because it's not just the, the cinnamon, it's not just it heating up that that browning occurs and that's it, no, it's a whole process. So French toast, what is it? Where does it come from? We eat it all the time, how do we know about it? First things first, French toast is not just French, nor is it unique to the French. French toast has been around for thousands upon thousands of years, called a million different things. It was even around when the Romans were around. And what it is, is really it's just a, a whole new way to um, enjoy stale bread. So you have stale bread and that's all you got. It's not really something exciting that you look forward to eating, but you dip it in a liquid, you add a little bit extra ingredients and now you have this whole new dish. So that is French toast and that's what we're gonna make today. So I'm gonna break down first just our main three ingredients, the bread, the milk, and the eggs, because there's a lot of science that just goes in with what they have. So the bread is the key component of our French toast. And what it does is it acts like a sponge. So the bread will soak up whatever mixture you make in the liquid here. And it really is that spongy, um, a spongy texture. And that's why they, uh, if you've made French toast before, if you've heard French toast being made, it, they will say, you know, use stale bread or use thicker, thicker bread. Cause mine's pretty thin. And if you go to restaurants, they use thick bread, like Texas toast kind of bread. And that really is just because of the absorption. So it depends on what you like. Again, it caters to you. So if you like, um, kind of a crustier outside, but a, a, a super soft inside, it's probably better to use a thicker piece of bread because the bread will soak up that liquid mixture, all of that yummy goodness, and it'll stay inside. And then once you heat it up, it has those two layers, right? It has the outside layer, which makes it nice and crusty and um, yummy. And then the inside will be soft and kind of custardy. So that is the bread. And of course the bread has its own uh, components inside what it's made out of. You have minerals, you have vitamins, there's starch, there's sugar. Again, all this sugar is gonna react together and proteins, amino acids, they're all gonna react. Then you have the milk. And so the milk is the liquid that'll help soften the bread and get all of that goodness together and create that rich, rich texture. And what it does is it adds that moisture to, again, keep it soft when you're frying the outside. But it also adds fat, because milk has fat, milk has proteins, milk has its own sugars. So again, what happens when sugars and proteins and amino acids all react together? The Maillard reaction. So that is what's happening. And then of course, our last main ingredient are the eggs. So the egg really acts as your binder because if you're dipping bread in a liquid, you're just gonna have soggy bread and you're gonna fry it up and it's just gonna be soggy bread. It's gonna be disgusting. So you need the binder. You need to create that layer on the outside to really get what you want. So, okay, 
we are going to get started. I know I threw a lot of a lot of science at you, but now we're going to do the fun stuff. We're going to see how it all kind of comes together. Butter also has its own um, ingredient list and all that, but I'm just going to skip it. Okay, so you're going to take an egg. I'm just making two pieces, and since my two pieces are thin, I only need one egg. Again, it depends on what kind of bread you want. Um, if you have a multigrain bread, uh, it'll work fine. Um, but again, it just depends on the thickness. I will say, if you choose a bread that has a lot of holes in it, it's not going to work so great. Again, because bread is a sponge, so it can't really absorb anything if there's holes. So I would just recommend not that many holes. It's okay. One egg. Crack. And just put it in your shallow dish. Move my eggs over so they don't fall and break. So here's my egg. And I'm just gonna whisk it together. Kind of like how you make scrambled eggs, just whisk. And I really kind of eyeball everything, all the ingredients, because I know what I like. Um, so you can experiment, it's a great way to experiment. And if not, I would probably start with like a teaspoon of the other ingredients. But so here is my whisk, whisk egg. You have your egg. Right after the egg, you're gonna add your milk. Again, I eyeball it because depending on how you like your French toast, if you like it more of an eggy consistency, you put less milk. But if you like it more of a non-eggy consistency and more more kind of evened out. Put a little bit more of a of your liquid to even everything. I'm just gonna. You can start off with like an eighth of a cup is probably what I would start off with. Cause I like mine thinner, not super eggy, not super milky. So I don't know if you can see that. But there you go. All right, so that is the milk. So we got our milk, our eggs, the bread will go last, so don't worry about that. And then a little bit of vanilla extract. Again, like a teaspoon, a quarter of a teaspoon. It really is to your, your taste. I just dip. Oh no, my fork fell. And you want to do a little bit of salt because the salt actually helps start this process too. There's so many different components in French toast, but the little bit of salt really helps. And not a lot, just a teeny tiny bit. You can barely see it, see? Just a little bit. Just to get it started. You don't want the salt for the flavor because who wants salty French toast, right? It's just to get the reaction starting. So just a little bit. Then some sugar. I do a pinch, which is probably it's a pinch. Maybe like a teaspoon. But I kind of just like this. Again, if you like sweeter, put a little bit more sugar. I'm gonna put a little bit more. Um, if you like less, and French toast doesn't have to be sweet like this because we're putting cinnamon and sugar. You can make it savory. And then my cinnamon. I love cinnamon, so I add a lot. But that's all you need to do. You can see all the cinnamon in mine. I'm gonna scrape the sides. Mix it all together. And there we go. Our batter is ready. And French toast is so much easier than pancakes because like in the name, pancakes, it is kind of a cake in a pan. So it's definitely more, um, you have to get your ratios right. But for French toast, it has a wider margin of error. Okay. This is where you would add your chocolate if you wanna make it a chocolatey French toast. 
but that's it. You end here, then you take your slices of bread, take out as many as you want, put them to the side. So I'm taking two, put them right to the side. And now you can go ahead and get your pot, go to your stove, and start heating it up with some butter. So I am gonna make my way over to the stove. Okay. Hello, everybody. Hello, hello. Here is my bread. Here is my spatula. And then my pan. So what you're gonna do is you are going to want to heat it up. I would start off on a lower setting because if you um, if you start off on medium medium high it might depending on your stove because again this all is depending on your appliances but it might get too hot and of course you know your first French toast the first slice of bread usually doesn't come out the best it's always the ones after it but yes so I start off at a you can see it's kind of a low temp and then I have my butter And I'm just gonna put it like half a tablespoon. I'm only making two slices, it doesn't need that much. And you just wait until your butter melts. So as you can see, my butter's here. Just gonna mix a little bit. And depending on the thickness of your bread is how long you will dip it in the batter. Since I have a thin one, it's just a few seconds. So probably one, two, three, four. And on the other side, one, two, three, four, five. And then let it kind of drain. And just put it right, right there. If you have a thicker bread, then you want to leave it longer so it can really soak up your mixture. And then I think I have enough space for another one. Let me dip it. One, two, three, four, five. And then one, two, three, four, five. And now here is where you can kind of raise the temperature if you want, but you can listen to it. It's sizzling a bit, but mine might be a little too low. I'm just gonna raise it up a bit there. And you just leave it for a few minutes. Let it, let me, let it uh, get that nice Maillard reaction, that browning on one side. The great thing about French toast is it's a fast, it's a fast meal. And then you can think about what kind of toppings you want to put on it. If you have any fresh fruit, um, any powdered sugar, some maple syrup, if you like honey. Yeah, you just leave it a few minutes and then we're going to flip it over. But here we have everything kind of in motion for that Maillard reaction. All the proteins, all the amino acids. The sugars, they're all combining together, heated up. We heated it up, and this is our reaction occurring. You don't really think that much about food with like science. You think more of baking, um, but just regular cooking, there's still so much you that you can do. Alright, so I'm gonna check the bottom. Slow on a little bit. So since we have to wait anyway, and I'm here. So there's a lot of other things you can do to experiment with French toast. Again, like I said, it's catered to you, but I mean, what if you want it to be a softer consistency or a harder consistency? Or what if you do 
less egg, more milk, or more milk, less egg, um, how much sugar you add, how much cinnamon. There's just a lot of great ways to experiment with French toast. And there's another way you can make it too to kind of make it more of a more of a dessert. You can, and if you have smaller children, this is a great way too that they can help in the kitchen. You can break apart the bread, like take off the crust, break the bread into about four pieces, and then um, turn, sorry, stick them all together and turn them into like a ball, like a little bread ball. Dip them in the egg mixture, fry them up how you're frying the regular French toast here. But then you can get a bag or a bowl of cinnamon sugar. Like you just put um, a bunch of, uh, I think it's like a fourth of a cup of sugar and then maybe like a teaspoon of cinnamon. And then once the French toast balls are done, you can kind of roll them in there and you kind of have like a donut. So okay, my French toast is ready to flip. Actually, there we go. I see that brownie. Not just the cinnamon. Oh, that one's beautiful. The French toast doesn't take that long. That's why it's such a great breakfast food. So, all right, French toast should be done. Yep, perfect. French toast. So I'm gonna go back to my table and we're gonna put all of our toppings on top. Okay, hello. So we have made our French toast, as you can see. Beautiful, you see that browning? That is not the cinnamon, that is the Maillard reaction happening. And this looks delicious, I can't wait to eat it. So if you wanna get very fancy with your French toast, you can get some powdered sugar. I'm just gonna use my fingers, but other people like put it in the strainer to really make it nice, but. Get some powdered sugar, sprinkle it on top. Then I have some fresh strawberries, actually. I'm going to put some fresh strawberries on top. I love fresh fruit with French toast. And then my maple syrup. Ta! -da! We have French toast. Very, very easy to make, simple. There's not um not too many fancy schmancy ingredients for just regular French toast, but there is French toast. We talked about the Maillard reaction. Um, there's also like physical reactions and chemical reactions happening. The physical ones are is really, you know, you're cutting up everything, you're mixing the eggs and stuff like that. The chemicals, like we talked about the Maillard and everything. And again, you can experiment, do some more things, um, a firmer texture, a soggier texture. You want it even browner maybe. What would you do? More crispy outside. But if you're thinking about, if you like this science and you like these kind of experiments, think about a career maybe as a chef or as a chemist. I mean, chemists do a lot too. And like I said, baking is basically chemistry. You really have to get things down. But thank you so much for coming to another Make It Monday video. I am going to enjoy my French toast. I hope you enjoy yours. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video and come back for more Make It Monday videos. Like in the name, every Monday we will have something. And please, please, please go to our website for more virtual programming. We have a ton happening right now. If you go to shypublib.org, you can go to our events page and just see everything that we have to offer. The STEAM team has its own programming that is available, but various branches have theirs. We have to make it Monday, STEAM Powered Saturdays coming up. So please check that out and hopefully see you soon. Thank you. Bye.